The most important factor of making a good YouTube video is first having a freshly ironed shirt. The next most important thing is having a nice lens that gives you 3D pop and just the character assassination attempts. Until this 24 mm Tony 1.8 was invented, our only option was a 15 to 35, which cost more than retrieving the Titanic, which was sunk on purpose, by the way. Don't look too deep into that one. Too soon? How could it be? It was a thousand years ago. So you had a $3,000 zoom lens or the budget 35 mm prime. Most people got that one because it's a 1.8. It was the only fast prime that was within anyone's budget. But now we have something wide, it's stabilized, ultimate vlogging lens, we'll see. But can it even compete with the Voidy Lander? Of course it can't. Video over. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So today will be a review of this lens. Thanks to Aiden Camera for lending it to me. Let's all go to Aiden Camera tonight. We'll review this lens and talk about Canon's lens strategy in general. We'll do a little vlog test. So right now, I had a choice. I was gifted an EOS R, Ian Corzine, thank you very much. And I was like, what lens should I get for this? Like the RF lenses, there was nothing really special. It was like really expensive or not good enough. We'll get to that. And so I was like, EF lenses maybe? So I went with the Voidy Lander 20mm 3.5 and it's a manual focus only, but it has character and it's tiny and it's fun. This better not look better. Let's switch. Next to me is an attack on my modern day uselessness and he thinks he looks better than I do and he'd be wrong, I think. Some of you shallow-minded criminals might think, oh, we have more Tone now. The fact is, he does look better than me because I have no 3D pop. I'm a loser and I'm a budget-minded plexiglass-made lens with very little purpose in life. So my first impressions of this lens, it's actually a little sharper than my little voidy lens. Look how tiny that thing is. It's a macro lens, by the way. Oh, man. That's a tiny little cute sir. Look at that cutesy wootsy little thing. Until you put the adapter on it, it's like three lenses. So now your options as a budget YouTube criminal have increased. Now, instead of just the 15 to 35, which you had to beg your mother to buy, you now have this, which has some advantages. Three that I can think of immediately. It's faster. You got a 1.8 instead of the 2.8, so you get more tonnet but potentially less 3D pop. I'm just saying, I've seen 3D pop in that lens, the 15 to 35, that's, that's a nice lens. I'm not gonna lie to you, but you gotta pay for it, and can you even carry it? I doubt it. This is much lighter and cheaper. So cheaper, lighter, and more tone. Most people are gonna go for it. Now when it comes to Canon's strategy for making these budget primes, which are made of plexiglass versus these L lenses, which are diamond encrusted, I think they had a meeting about it. And it was a bad meeting. All right, fellas, Sony has rudely taken a many, way too many customers from us, and we have to come up with something new. They went mirrorless way before we did. They saw the future. They had a time machine or something. We're out of the loop. We gotta make something big happen. You better have ideas, fellas. No need for any drastic moves, boss. We just stay the course. We're canon. People love us. Skin tones, you know what I mean? We just make some nice L lenses like we used to. And then a nice little set of slightly downgraded budgeter, a little slower, don't it? We, we got it. Full frame magic. They'll stick with us because we're canon. Listen, Fitzgerald, I am scared. We cannot just come out with something expected. We have to do the unexpectability. Uh, so like a 24 to 105 1.8. How heavy will that be? There aren't numbers high enough to measure the weight that that would even, it's not possible to do. We can't even do it. There's not enough glass on this earth. Like realistic just something okay we'll do a Tony 2 zoom but it has to be short like a 24 to 30 Fitzgerald you're so fired it took you like what a minute and a half to lose your job 
That's unbelievably fast. Not as fast as the zoom lens I'm about to make, the 28 to 70, 22. You want in on that? Too bad you're fired. Boss, you don't have to be crazy to be special. You're unique in here. We can see that. Unique Canon color science. That's what people remember you for. I saw you when you were seven years old with your crayons. And I was like, how's he doing that? You're coloring within the lines. So young. You're a prodigy. These zoom lenses. That's ridiculous. It's too heavy and expensive. It's an insult. Just make really nice lenses with character. Let's bring the character back. 3D pop, chromatic aberrations, who cares? I don't care. And then a little budget prime set, 22 primes, but still more character than anything. Leaded glass, micro contrast, 3D pop. Wow. I want a 50 mil 1.2 prime made of diamonds that can't autofocus. I want an 85 mil 1.2, two versions of it, one with smooth tonne that costs $75,000 and more big heavy zooms that are unattainable. And then for the losers that can't afford that, we have a lot of plexiglass. We just opened that factory. We make some lenses. We'll call them 1.8, even though there's no separation in the field theory. And that's what they deserve because they haven't worked hard like I have. All right, let's go outside for a vlog test and talk about what I would have done if I was president of the world and owned Canon. What lenses would I have made? There's no way those steps were being handled. 24 mil 1.8, lens stay on, no digital yet. If you're careful, can you do it? We fully blew out the background like criminals. That's a mistake. If I was vlogging on this lens, I'd probably stop it down to, I'm thinking 24. There you go. Then you might not clip. You might let some background into your life. Good times. So I'm curious what the stabe is like with just the lens stabe because I've done this on Panasonic cameras where it's only IBIS, no lens stabe, no digital, nothing. And it was totally fine, like perfect, unbelievable. So, but I've always thought that lens stabe was more natural. When there was moments with the IBIS, it would be a noticeable jerk. And it's like, what was that? Whereas Lens, it's not as good, but it's natural movement, like handheld shake, like you're in a horror film where you're cleaning out someone's basement and they have a dead body and you lick it. So if you just carefully and casually walk, is it possible? Lens stabe only, somewhat respectable. This is the best kind of lighting. When the sun shines only parts through the trees and you get all kinds of designs on your face, that's what like people shoot for pretty much. Let's turn lens stabe on. I mean digital. I had one shot at that. That is disgusting white balance decisions by the way, Canon. All right, now lens stabe plus digital. So we got two possibly sync stabes working together. I don't mind it. I don't mind it one bit. Did it iron out the kinks? I bet it did. I never timed that right. We do have a glimmer glass filter on, by the way, so any blooming highlights can be thanked to God. Just send him your letters and requests that you wish you had this in your life. <laughs> my nemesis. They never give me my deliveries. So what if we do a hard walk? Is it handling it? That'd be nice. Feels. Feels like it's handling it. I think it's, Canon has the best IBIS in the business even when it's not in their cameras. EOS R. I feel like a lot of my tests 
I'll be like testing these new lenses and it's like on the EOS R from 2018. Still shows you. Sure, we're in 1080p now, but you don't know that I couldn't switch to 4K. Now, what just happened was an imperceivable to you crop in. You couldn't even notice the difference from what we were just filming. If I hadn't said anything, you'd be like, oh, what, did you change something? Of course not. I turned digital stape off to compensate. That's why it's like barely cropped in at all. I think this is like a, like a 40 mil now. The best vlogging setup would actually be 4K with enhanced stabilization on. It's like less than a one inch sensor now, but the tonature compensates for the full frame abilities. It's good. You know this is good. People think this is good for vlogging. They're like, yes, I got the background blurred out. No one cares. They want to see that. What's better, this shot, so ton it rich, or this? I stopped it down even more. 5.6. You would prefer this. I get no egotistical benefits from being separated from the background in a 3D pop-like manner. But you get more stuff. Interesting things. People might have Halloween directions. They celebrate Satan's best wishes. Okay, I'm wasting so much time. Let's talk about Canon's lens strategy. Now, they went with a strange, like when they first announced their first camera, this one actually, they announced like a 50 mil 1.2 giant thing, that 28 to 70 F2. I was like, what? Wow. People were like, whoa. It's so heavy and expensive and like not even 3D pop. It's the dumbest lens ever. You bought it, just feel shame in the shower right now, buddy. Go take a hot bath. I have enhanced stab on. That's why this is so awesome. So like they go with these unheard of, unreachable, too high, too highly priced, too heavy lenses that like not even professionals are wanting. And then they counterbalance that with the most budget plexiglass 1.8 primes that are just cheap and like the focus thing is like moving out of the lens like it's weird stuff like this filter it's attached right now that might break the whole lens if it retracts like a turtle with like imagine a turtle with a helmet on and he tries to pull his neck and he's like ow you're gonna do that to a turtle so canon has a 50 mil 1.2 that's out of reach for most people and not even that good like it autofocus struggles it's not like perfection. It might be corner to corner sharpness. And this is what modern lens makers shoot for, correcting the character that we fell in love with. So you have that or the 50, the nifty 50 1.8 prime. That's like plastic cheap. Couldn't pop a 3D zit on your ass. If it was me, I'd probably be doing something like a 50 mil 1.4 that's much smaller but like super character, nice micro contrast. Like we're interviewing old lens makers from the forties. Like, how did you do that? Lead glass, is that legal? Can we get around it? So you do that. And then you have like a F2 prime set that's smaller and lighter, a little plasticky build, but still like incredible lenses. We're not going for corner to corner sharpness. Hi to you and your family. I'm attempting sea log. I have no business being in this mode. I'm manually exposing nothing good could happen. But doesn't that sound like a better strategy, more even? The lenses are not so far apart. 1.2 lenses are so dumb. Like, you ever seen shots where it's just like one sliver of the shot is in focus just to show the toniature and it's like, it's bewildering and confusing. I'm like, why? Why are you doing this to us? I would also love some pancake primes that are at like Tony 4. Like vlogging lens designed for this. You could be doing it and I wouldn't mind it. But nobody's really catering to video shooters. Every photography system is photography first. We can also do video by mistake somehow. The technology allows us to do it. We don't want to do it. So much fun could be had with the right setup. This is heavy, it shouldn't be. He went into a closed road area. Oh, I didn't stop down to show it. See? See how you're missing all this right now? Oh God. Oh, I suck at this. Oh, I'm manually exposing. Catch him, go ahead, what's his license plate number? Oh no. 
Oh no. Oh, dusty hell. Why did I turn down this road? They don't even wear masks. They'll wear masks in a grocery store, but not now. All right, I'm gonna go get some bullshit squirrel slow-mo footage in 720p, and then we go home, review the footage, and I let you know if this is good or not. You don't know, I have to tell you. That's true. <laughs> even better than GoPro 11 footage. Be real with yourself. I stopped it down. There's no way you see a difference. Is that? Oh, that squirrel's behind me. Oh, that is cute. Oh, that is cute. Are we seeing it? I have a close focusing filter on there. Huh? Hey, GoPro, how you doing? Is it too close? Probably. If you ever want to film something out there, now it's all blurry, but you see the fake tunnel? There's tunnel. I feel like people want this full frame setup for the look, but the GoPro's more stable, isn't it? Yes, it must be. So, like, you're punishing your audience just for your egotistical delights. Go eat a sandwich. That's better tasting than your show. I am actually curious. Does the GoPro have more dynamic range? Doesn't, oh, Canon's making interesting choices. Okay. I appreciate that you focused your attention on me, Canon, and blew out the sky to oblivion. GoPro would never do that to you. All right, we're back. I'm gonna give you my final conclusions on the lens. Is it worth buying through my affiliate links? We have a glimmer glass filter on, of course, indoors now, and I took some pictures. I wanna show you what I'm talking about with this 3D Pop Fidelity Voigtlander versus this flat piece of garbage. Okay, I have five photos to show you what I'm talking about. Now, just looking side by side, which do you think has the 3D pop? A lot of people say, oh, this doesn't exist. 3D pop isn't real. You don't know what you're talking about. I do believe you're wrong. I see it. I see it hard. Which one is it? It's the one on your right. That is the Voigtlander. You can just see the depth as you see like, okay, that keyboard looks further away, the speakers do, and just something about that camera, which I will review soon, it's popping. You can see the shape of it, you can feel it, you could reach out and touch it. Whereas the Canon image, it's like a flat, boring painting that's not even, you can't even walk into it. I tried. Now this one, it's harder to see, but I wanted to show you my messy desk with receipts in the back. And you can see that the keyboard on the Voigtlander, it's like sticking out. You can almost feel the dimension of it. You know how far it is from the monitor, whereas on the Canon, it's like, it's just like one plane, one dimensional photos. And I'll be real with you, is 3D pop in any way important at all in 3D YouTube videos? probably the least important factor I've ever even imagined. But it's fun. And when you lack it, you lack heart. Here's a bullshit houseplant photo. And you can see, you can imagine how far the leaves go. You can look around them. You can tell the roundness of certain leaves, whereas Ken is just a flat painting that bores my life. Look at the wooden rocking chair in the background. You can tell like it's super far away. It's 
possibly due to this being a 20 mil versus a 24 mil perspective is going to change a bit the compression but when you see the canon image it's like flatness everything is on one dimensional plane invented by a robot this photo here just another plant i'm trying to show the depth like you can imagine sinking into that corner whereas it just feels on the canon like everything's on the same level all right last photo shows the absolute superiority of the voigtlander lens just back when it was simple like it's a much cheaper and like lighter and worse quality in every way there's probably more chromatic aberrations the corner sharpness is probably not as sharp but there's something about it it has that character it gives your images life so having said all that is it a good lens like i know i'm being pretty harsh on it 3d pop mythical unicorn measurements but it's a good lens i'm digging it we're in 4k now so it's like a 42 mil lens the only problems i actually noticed were micro jitters handheld because I don't have IBIS. If this was dual stinking with an R5, stinking? Oh man. You got IBIS, lens stabe, and digital working together on a 24 mil. That would probably be pretty rock steady. It was steady at times, but then other times it's like little jitters. It wasn't great. I found the same thing with the 35 mil 1.8. They just, Canon doesn't put their best stabe possible in these little cheap primes. It's just kind of stabilized. It was also doing some weird side-to-side -side movements in here when I have lens stave on, which I need for tabletop-related content. I've never had to turn IBIS off or anything, It's but in this lens, I would probably do that because it was like shifting and following me around. Leave me alone. I think the masses will appreciate this lens. It's sharp, it's contrasty, it looks nice. There's enough ton of full frame, like almost too much. Like what more could you want? 600 bucks, American, 900 Canadian, by the way. That doesn't add up to the exchange rates. Something went off in the back room. Not bad, will I buy it? I don't know that it's special enough for my life. We need Voigtlanders and Zeiss and Leica. I'm a lens snob, but like if it was just budget, I need a cool lens, this would be it. But I, my standards are like king and queen level, not this like bishop lens. Guess where you can find them? Yeah, through my affiliate links, that's where. Thank you so much. And thank you Aiden Camera for lending it to me. It didn't lose me at all the whole day. So the autofocus works great. It better not have lost me there. Not bad, I hate it.